Okay, this time let's set up some coins. So, this is what we've got working so far. Quick note, I noticed after recording the video is the animation doesn't seem to loop forever. So if you just go back into your um, content, characters, mannequins, animation folder, um, where we were before, and inside that you go to your um, anim graph, locomotion, idle, and then click on your run. Over here in the detail section on the right side, you will see a loop animation button. If you tick that loop animation button, that should hopefully fix that issue. So we can put that over there, test it again. Cool. Animation is now working. So here's what we're going to do now. Let's make coins, collectibles. Then we've almost got a bit of a basic game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my content folder. I'm actually going to create a new folder here. So the new folder I'm going to create by right clicking in some space and typing in new folder, which I'm just going to call BPs for blueprints, which are um, just classes. You know, it's just um, an object that will have code and be able to do things. So inside this blueprint folder, I'm going to right click again. I'm going to create a new blueprint class, which will be a type actor. And I'm going to call it coin. Um, underscore BP or BP underscore coin or you know something along those lines but coin underscore BP which I'll double click to open and that's going to bring me up this window now so far there's nothing in here so let's go ahead and add a cylinder so just press this big button on the top and cylinder and add a cylinder now doesn't really much much like a coin, so I'm just going to rotate it and squash it. And looks a little bit more like a coin. Eventually, though, I will want you to replace this with a 3D model, but this will do for a, a placeholder for now. So let's go ahead and hit compile. All right, now that we have this coin looking thing, let's press add again. And this time, let's add a sphere collision. So this sphere collision, you'll might need to scale it up or tweak it, but it wants to be sort of just a little bit bigger than your coin, like that. This is actually what's going to detect if we hit or overlap with the player. And once it's done that, it will um, destroy itself. So with the sphere still selected, we're going to scroll right down on this detail section on the right hand side. And we're going to click the second button here that says on component begin overlap. So, this is when the coin is overlapped with, we need to tell it who the other actor is, which is our BP third person character, because that's what our main character is called by default. So when the coin overlaps with the character, let's just destroy self for now. So destroy actor. So, nice and simple. When the coin overlaps with the player, destroy itself. So I'm just going to, first of all, I'm just going to put this in my level because I suspect it might be a bit big. Yeah, you know what? For the sake of testing, it might be okay. So now we've got a coin, and that coin's going to come into our level. It's not actually going to do anything yet. So we're going to tell it, actually, we want it to move. So it's not got physics or anything. So I'm just going to use this tick again, like we did. And I'm just going to say, add offset. Um, let's add actor world offset and I never remember which numbers this will be let's try minus 10 on the X I think it's X so if we put a coin in our level now like this and we press play cool this coin moved now to actually see if it works we're going to need to put it directly in front of the player so let's just put it over there so we can test it. It worked. The coin entered the level and when our player hits it, we collected it. Fantastic. Let's make it a little bit better. I mean, first of all, it's way too fast. So I'm actually going to change that to, I don't know, maybe minus four. Again, up to you to tweak those numbers and get those numbers right. We're going to add another component to this. So we're going to press add. And we want a rotating movement. Now, rotating movement, fairly self-explanatory, but it's going to rotate on the spot. 
and it's going to rotate 180 degrees on the Z axis. So again, let's test this. You can see it's now spinning as it came towards. Cool, right? You can increase that number, have it go way faster, have it go way slower, up to you. Again, that's just another number that I'd like you to tweak and find what's going to work for you. I also feel like the coin's a bit big, if I'm honest with you. I feel like the coin's a little bit big. So, on the cylinder, I'm just going to, or oh, maybe even on the default scene root, actually. So I'm going to click the default scene root, and when I say scale, I'm just going to, I don't know, half it to 0 0.5. Yeah, that feels a bit better. Awesome. Now, obviously we'll add a sound effect to this, we'll add a score, and maybe a particle system. You know, all of that would sort of help sell it. But for now, I think that'll do. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna get these actually spawning in the level. So, let's move this window out of the way a second. Put it down here. And let's do this on the level blueprint. For now. We might end up moving it, but for now we'll do it on the level blueprint. So I click this little button up here. And let's say open level blueprint. Inside here, we are going to let's how should we do this? Ooh, interesting. Um let's say on begin play. On begin play, we're going to want to spawn a coin. Um but we're actually going to want to spawn coins frequently. So we could create a function for this, but let's, it's not going to function just yet. Let's do set event by timer. Oh, sorry, set timer by event. Okay, and this is what's going to sort of allow it to, to loop. So we're going to have an event, which will be spawning of the coin. How often do we want to spawn a coin? Let's just, for the sake of now, let's just say every one second. And do we want this to loop? Of course we do. Okay. Now, this next part might seem a little bit more complicated, but we're going to drag off this event, let go, and we're going to type in custom event, and I'm going to call it spawner. So, just for creating, in terms of creating a simple spawning system now, every one second, this event is going to get fired. So, on here, we are going to want to spawn actor from class. Spawn actor from class. What actor do you want to spawn? Well, I want to spawn my coin. Mm -hmm. So let's type in coin underscore BP. Now we have something called spawn transform. This is saying, where do you actually want to spawn it? Now, we're going to check that in a second, but first I want you to right click it and I want you to say split strut pin. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to spawn, we've got location, rotation, and scale. It's actually the location. We're actually going to want to split that again. So right click that, say split. Now we can see the X, the Y, and the Z. Now to understand what numbers we're going to need, because all of our numbers might be slightly different, just for the sake of now, you see I've got this coin here, the coin that I put in my level early to test. Does that start off camera? It doesn't, it's just a little bit over here. That's about off camera. So now that's off camera and it's sort of in the place we want to be, I can actually see in the details panel the X, the Y, and the Z. So Z might be anywhere from 30 up to maybe, I don't know, 400, 300. So coming back to this, we know our Z is going to be between 30 and 300. So I'm actually going to get a random float in range. A random float in range. And that'll be between 30 and 300. Now, what are the X and the Y's? So, we know the Y, we don't want to move that, we are happy with that. And the, we, we could add a bit to this, it might make it feel a little bit more fun, a little bit less obvious. So, potentially, we might add a random to that as well. Um, but for now, let's just get those numbers in. So our Y is a strict 1100. The X, feel free to add a random to this. Let's add a random. 
a random floating range again. And let's just say, I don't know, between 2000 and 26,000. Again, like all the other numbers, you might want to tweak and test them. So if I actually delete this now, because I don't need that coin anymore, and press play, will coin spun. Cool. You can now see we've got a variety of coins. They're not quite high enough, but so I'm going to need to go back and set that Y. But for the most part, uh, that Z, sorry, it's going to probably want to be double, if not triple. But for the most part, we've got something there. So I'm actually going to set you to, I don't know, let's try 800. And with this, we've got ourselves a bit of a basic game going on. So again, as always, tweak the numbers. Okay, um, that number's too high. Maybe you want to tweak the speed. Maybe you want to mess with all the numbers. Best way to sort of commit all this to memory is to mess with the numbers. All right then, on to the next one.